Hello everyone, it's Deal from Firm But Fair Gaming, bringing you another Diablo 3 video. Welcome everybody to another Season 25 video. So we are on a monk again. So I am just going to show you a quick farm build for the Inner Monk here. So of course the Inner Monk is the S tier solo push and even group push uh class for season 25 it seems to be the it class i've already cleared a 150 on this in solo so i just wanted to show uh what my speed build looks like for when i'm farming keys both in group play and in solo just to give people an idea of what they could do for for that so this build is going to be kind of dependent on you being somewhat familiar with the original build. A uh, link will be in the description as well at the end of the video. Um, so I'll touch briefly on, on that build as well in here, but mainly you're gonna need a little bit of that knowledge before jumping into this. So let's jump into it. Let's take a look at the gear and show you what we got. So the gear here, and I'm also just going to throw up a little GR in the bottom here. So in the bottom is me running 120 speeds uh, with this build, just so you can see kind of what the build's capable of. I uh, got a couple spaghetti maps, so it wasn't the, as quick as if you got like a festering or whatever, but you can get the idea of how quick it is. So in this build, it is much the same as what we would have for our solo pushing with the exception or the adjustments being uh, that instead of wearing endless walk so travelers pledge and compass rose we are using a squirts necklace as well as we are um, wearing focus and restraint so those are the item switches and then for our weapons we're using an ingium and of course we want an ingium because after we kill an elite our cooldowns are reduced by 10 seconds for 15 seconds after killing that elite. So basically it's going to make our mystic ally uh, off CD much more frequently. And because we don't have a convention of elements, uh, we need this off as often as possible because we're going to be popping that without any cycle just uh, after we get our restraint and focus and restraint buff, then we're going to be popping our mystic ally. So by having NGM, we're going to have it up much more often. And then we're also using Echoing Fury to increase our attack speed. Aside from that, our cube looks pretty much the same with the only other difference being that we're going to switch. I'll jump over to the cube so we can actually see the picture. Of course, it's hidden behind my GR right here. So let me just move that off to the side so we can see. So that's Measure Smiths. Then we're running our Bracers, Bindings of the Lesser Gods, and then our Ring of Royal Grandeur. So that is going to be what we're using uh, in our speed runs. And then for our gems, we are using Gogok to, uh, for our cooldown reduction and our attack speed because we don't really need a Strickens because we're basically going to be one-shotting almost everything ever anyways. So that is the main variation in the build. So of course, just a quick overview, we're going to be wearing five-piece Ennis. So we got the gloves, chest, belt, and boots, and the, and the helmet. And then we're going to be using all guilds for the damage versus elites. And then we're wearing squirts with focus and restraint. And then we got, of course, our boots being the crudest boots for our mystic ally damage. And then we're using NGM for the cooldown reduction. And then we are using Echoing Fury. So that's the quick rundown of the items that we need for this build. So we're just going to cover the skills. Just to recap, again, the skills are going to be what we're used to for this solo build. So for the skills, we're it's a pr the same thing that we had for our solo. So we got Wave the Hundred Fists with Blazing Fists, and we have Cyclone with Implosion because of course we're going to when we before we pop our Mystic Ally, we're going to Cyclone to get the damage boost from our Bindings of the Lesser Gods, and then we're going to pop our Mystic Allies to get that damage. We're using Serenity with Ascension for the four second immunity. Dashing Strike with Radiance, because after we dash, it's going to also increase our attack speed for four seconds. And then we have our Mystic Ally with the Fire Ally, which is our big damage because it's going to create more allies and they're going to blow up for massive weapon damage. And then for our cooldown or, or um, our safety, our survivability, we're going to be using Epiphany with Desert Shroud. So that basically lets us dash around or teleport to our targets that we're attacking and gives us the 50% damage reduction. 
And then for our passes, because we're this is a farm bill, we're not really going to be in jeopardy of dying. We're going to be able to just move quickly and want to deal as much damage as possible. We're going to be using Seize the Initiative to deal increased damage against enemies above 75%, which is going to allow us or help us one-shot things. And we're going to reduce our cooldown by 20% through Beacon of Yitar to keep our get our Mystic Ally up as often as possible. And then we're going to have Unity. Uh, each ally affected by your mantras increases your damage because we want more damage. And then Momentum, uh, basically after moving 25 yards, we increase our damage. So as we're dashing around, going from elite to elite pack pretty much until we get big stacks of mobs where we're going to pop our ally, we're going to get that increased damage buff to help us move quickly through the rift and help our speeds go even faster. So to show the rotation in action, I'm just going to jump into the 120 here. So it's always the slowest at the start because you got to get your NGM rocking. So I just want to try to find an elite. So basically, so there I got my focus. And then when I use from generating resources and then when I spend some, I get the restraint. And then so you just want to get everything grouped up, pop the mystic ally, and it's just going to destroy everything. So I got my mystic ally back because I have measure smiths and enough died. So here we go here. Here's the elite, so I want to, got my momentum going, got my focus and restraint, popped it, and it just blew up that elite. And that's basically all you want to do, is as you move through, you're just going to fly through, get all the stacks for momentum from your focus and restraint, and then you're just going to pop your mystic ally and everything's going to blow up, and you're going to move on to find the next elite pack. Let's see if I can find next another quick one here. So let's see, you're going to just... Jump ahead, use Epiphany. So here's an actual decent amount of stack. So I'm just actually going to blow this up just because there's so much there and that's what you would want to do in the actual rift. There we go. So I just have my momentum, pop my mystic ally after getting my focus and restraint off and then that's all there is to it. For the stats, it's the same as usual. We're going to be wanting to use basically, or you will be using your existing gear that you had for when you're pushing solo. So, you know, you want your crit on your neck or on your head. You want to have elemental and then hopefully double crit on your amulet. Uh, then you want uh, dex vitality, cooldown if you can get it on your shoulders and then mystic ally damage. Then dex vitality and mystic ally on your chest. Bracers, you want elemental, dex vitality and crit. Bracers are, or belt is survivability, pants is survivability. Gloves, if you can get the quad, so that would be cooldown, attack speed, crit, crit. But otherwise, if you can get three rolls here, that's what ideally what you want. For the your rings, you want uh, crit, crit, and then cooldown if you can. So I got double crit here. That's about as good as you can do. But if you can get crit, crit, cooldown. And then for boots, uh, that's a survivability item. So basically, really, you just want the best unique modifier. Then for weapons, we want plus damage, cooldown, and then if you can afford it, like here on my Primal NGM, I was actually able to get uh, area damage as well, so that was pretty sweet. And then on my offhand, I just went attack speed, damage, and cooldown. I actually have pretty decent weapons for this speed build. And so those are the stats that I at least emphasize in my speed build. So this is the in a speed build that I use. So when I'm farming 120s, I can do it in about three minutes on average, unless you run into a bad map tile. I can even do 125s in around five minutes uh, pretty consistently. So this is what I'm doing when I'm farming gem levels or Paragon and when I'm doing speed groups. Uh, you could, I could probably do even 130s in it. It might get a little bit dicey or a little bit slower. So of course, when you're doing speeds, you want to try to be around two to three minutes because you get more XP on a three minute run doing like a 120 than if you get were to do 125s taking five minutes because just with the turn in after when you're done the rift and all that, it just is slightly better uh, XP. So you're a little bit better off doing something lower rift level that you can do quicker as opposed to higher rift levels that take much longer. So if you have any questions or comments about the build, please let me know. I'll be happy to answer any of those. And as always, we appreciate any likes, shares, and subscribes. We enjoy making the videos for you guys and hope you enjoy the content we're bringing you. If you have any suggestions about videos that you would like to see about this new season or about Diablo in general, let us know. We'd be happy to take a look at making those as well. So happy hunting everybody this week. Hope you get all the loot that you're looking for with all the right rolls and we'll see you at the next one.